Eh, es un honor para mí presentarles a Thomas Brown, que es el representante del de Instituto de Dinamarca, ETA Denmark. Eh, su presentación va a ser en inglés, cosa que sé que no es ningún problema para, para ninguno. Para mí es un gran honor, como he dicho, great honor to introduce a Thomas Brown. Thomas Brown es el director general, como decía, del organismo ETA de Mark, que es el organismo oficial de Dinamarca para el reglamento de productos de construcción y también para, como organismo notificado. Es el secretario general de la organización World Federation for Technical Approval Organization desde el año 2003. Eh, ha estado en los últimos 19 años trabajando en todos los temas de innovación y evaluación de la innovación de los productos de construcción, en la colaboración en el ámbito nacional con el Organismo Nacional de Acreditación y Normalización danés y con varias organizaciones europeas en el mismo campo. Tiene experiencia en los... En los códigos técnicos nacionales y reglamentaciones y toda la evaluación de la actitud de empleo de los productos. Ha trabajado también como consultor de varios países europeos, los países nórdicos o bálticos principalmente, para que ellos puedan hacer la implementación de la, del reglamento de productos de construcción en sus diferentes países y todos los aspectos que tienen que ver con el mercado CE. Y es además miembro del Comité Nacional Danés, que tiene que, que tiene que ver con el reglamento de productos de construcción, el equivalente a lo que sería el CIPC en España, que dirige el Ministerio de Industria. Eh, como decía, es un placer presentarle. Y, eh, Tomás, cuando igual. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Um, thank you. I don't know where I can... Thank you, Antonio. I have no idea what you said. Uh, but, uh, I hope that it was, uh, it was okay. I think this one changes the slides. Does this work at all? Yes, it does. Um, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to come today uh, and uh, take part in the celebration of your uh, 80th anniversary of the IETCC. Um, so uh, uh, I tried in my best uh, Spanish to, uh, to congratulate the organization and I found a small flag uh, with the Danish and the uh, Spanish flag. So uh, I'm very happy to be a part of this today. Um, IETCC has been a cooperator uh, for a very long time um, and uh, personally with Antonio for, for the past 19 years. Uh, so um, I'm very happy to be able to be here today, not only as a the Secretary General of the World Federation of Technical Assessment, but also as a, as a, a European uh, uh, collaborator for the, with, uh, with ITCC. But the main focus today is to uh, explain and to describe the, uh, one of the memberships that we share, uh, which is in the World Federation of Technical Assessment. Um, This is an organization which is of uh, huge importance for both our organizations and uh, I will now put on the hat of the Secretary General and try to explain a little bit about what is this organization, what is the use of the organization and where is the value that it brings uh, to not only us as members but also to the manufacturers of uh, construct products uh, globally. Um, so the organization uh, We call it a world organization, uh, which might be a little bit uh, over the top because we are not represented in every single country in the world, but we do have a global uh, presence. And you will see the members are in both uh, South and North America, most of Europe, uh, Africa, and parts of Asia, um, and also in the New Zealand and Australia. Uh, so it's, it's quite uh, widely spread over a number of different territories. Um, so um, uh, and we even have a, a new member which is not on, on, this, uh, on this chart yet, which is uh, Korea. They've just become a member in, uh, of the organization. Is that the organization 
European equivalent of WFTL, which is the UAATC, of which uh, uh, IATCC has been a member for many, many years as well. So the, 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 the fathers of UAATC took the same idea and the same philosophy and principle and thought. Um, and they started exploring what other organizations were there worldwide in 94 and 95. Um, and then there was in South Africa in 1996 an inaugural meeting and IATC was one of the founding members of the organization. So they've been a member of, uh, of the organization ever since. The structure of the meeting is because of the global, uh, or the, the, the structure of the organization is that we meet once a year. Uh, so for obvious reasons, uh, it's, uh, it's not a, a fast progressing organization as such, but it's highly dependent on the, on the input of, of the individual members uh, throughout the, the year and the cooperation between the members throughout the year. Um, the thing that binds the organizations and the members of the organizations together is the concept of technical assessment. Now, this is very important to distinguish from product certification um, because technical assessment is always, when we are talking about non-standardized products, it's always to promote innovation, to promote the use of innovative construction products. Um, that is the core of the members organizations uh, is what they do, is assessing uh, the, um, the, uh, the product and the, intended, uh, the fitness for intended use of the product. The, the word technical assessment has many names depending on which country you come from. In, in Spain it's a DIT, uh, in, the, in France it's an Abbey Technique, in Australia it's an appraisal. Uh, so it has many, many names. But the basis of it all is that you assess a product for which there is no standard. If you take the very broad term of innovation, then it means that it is any construction product or any construction system, building kit, for which there is no standard available. Um, so that's the very broad term of, of, uh, of what the, the area that we work in. And it means in basic principles that, um, that before the assessment starts, you need to prepare a, a, a document, you need to make a risk analysis to see how this new innovative product uh, relates to the other parts of the building, how it works into the building, uh, the durability um, and the, the performance characteristics which are relevant to assess the product. So all these things that are, are not known for an innovative product, that is the core of the work that we do as technical assessment bodies. Um, then of course there is a lot of testing to be done uh, and, and uh, assessing the performance of the, of the product or building kit in relation to the intended use of the product. That's the core of what the members do and is, it is this work that the organization wish to pro wishes to promote. All of the organizations work in fields where there is uh, different degrees of mandatory levels of the work which is done. In Denmark, for example, all the things that we do are completely voluntary. So for us, it's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's about the value of the competence that we bring in to, to the assessments that we make. But the different bodies and members of the organization work in different fields. Some of them work in areas where everything is regulated by mandatory uh, uh, law in, in their countries. So we, we operate in, in, in very different playing fields, but the basic, the core of the work is the same, what we do. Um, and over the past years, I mean, in, in 1990. But as we see, the globalization has certainly increased uh, manufacturers. They have their production uh, many, many places. Um, uh, they, uh, they, they sell their products globally. Um, 
they have manufacturing plants everywhere. They transport raw materials back and forth because transport has become cheaper and labor has become cheaper in certain parts of the world. So, and that means that, that the, uh, the, the whole scene looks completely different. Um, and also, uh, uh, we see that uh, the EU is trying to harmonize within the EU, but the EU still has a sort of a border against uh, other territories like the uh, Asian countries and the US, where they are still trying to, uh, there's still a battle uh, between those countries and not a complete harmonization. Um, not as uh, we see in, in, the, uh, in the EU. So the trading blocks has, uh, may, may harmonize within themselves, but they have difficulties in cooperating uh, uh, globally. Um, and this has an effect on the manufacturer's ability to, to place their products on the markets in the, different, um, in the different territories, especially when we are talking about products which are new and innovative. Um, and you can also see that, that the, um, the number of uh, standards, and since I'm now representing a, a global organization, the European standards are actually not that interesting. The ISO standards are much more interesting because those are the ones which are also known by our colleagues in, in Brazil and in, in New Zealand. When you come to these countries and you talk about European standards, they are sort of, oh yes, we know that's something that you do up there. Uh, but it's, um, it's not widely known. Uh, for example, the, uh, um, some of the standards uh, uh, that we use for the products are, are completely unknown to them uh, on a European level. So, so it's difficult not to, uh, to, uh, to promote the European standards to, uh, to a level that we are used to coming from a European country. So the ISO standards, and they have increased uh, in numbers. Um, I think there are more than uh, 15,000 ISO standards at, at uh, this time for various uh, different types of, uh, of products and services. So it's quite, a, it's quite a, an increase. Um, the whole key uh, to, to what the, the organizations and the members of WF2 are, are, are doing is to enable the manufacturers to place their products on their market, to create acceptance of their product in the marketplace, uh, and to provide credibility uh, of the information uh, that the manufacturer supplies uh, to, the, to the market about his product. Um, for construction products which are subject to standards, uh, uh, like glass, chips and bolts, and, and other things covered by, by standards, the, the, the reason why they are covered by standards is, is that there is a well-known experience about how they perform and what they do. So there is a, a natural expectation that if a product is, is assessed in accordance with a standard, it is also accepted. Um, it is not quite the same thing with an innovative product. In many situations, the manufacturer will have an, uh, a challenge in convincing the market uh, that the product is, uh, is performing uh, equally good as the, the well-known product. For example, in coming from the north, thermal insulation is a high issue uh, with, with us. Um, and uh, traditionally, uh, mineral wool insulation products have been used uh, in, the, in the Nordic countries. Uh, and has, it has even been regulated quite a bit. Uh, and manufacturers have then tried to uh, invent uh, other types of insulation products made from sheep's wool, from uh, rice husks, from uh, flowers, uh, other things. Uh, and obviously the manufacturers who are, manu uh, who are making these insulation products are having a challenge because the mineral wool products are so well known in the, in the country. So, they come to us to get, shall we say, credibility about the, um, about the, uh, the, the performance of the product and that it works and it has a, 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 a reasonable durability. So that's, that's the, the core of what we do. And what we want to do in the organization is to be, be able to export the competence that we make so that the manufacturer does not need to repeat the same thing when he goes to new markets. That's sort of the, the whole idea of this organization. Because it is um, obvious that when a manufacturer 
he sells his market, uh, his product in different markets, he may be met uh, with the same uh, lack of knowledge about his product and the same reservations about using a new product. Um, and for us, it is in many situations, it is the same issues that he is faced with. It's the same questions. Is it durable? Does it perform as you say it, it does? Uh, so it's the same questions which are asked by the, by, the, by the customers to the manufacturer. And if we can somehow in our organization make this work from territory to territory easier uh, for the manufacturer, then we can, uh, we can make his access to the market uh, easier and quicker. And that's, that's the, the, the main key of the of, uh, issue of the organization. Um, we are not trying in the organization to make an assessment or an approval that is global. Because the word approval has the implication that it not only is the fitness for use assessed, but you have, you have also approved the product for use in that country. And the last step about approving a product for use in a country requires a lot of knowledge about the building regulation in that particular country. So um, we are not trying to make an approval that, that covers the whole world. That is a little bit too ambitious. Uh, we started with that ambition, but uh, we had to, to think that this was, would be too, uh, this, this was too much. So what we can agree on is the assessment of the fitness for use. This is normally the same approach in many, many countries. And then the national issue would be to see if the product then, when you fit, assess the fitness for use, that it can actually be used in, in the country. And that would be a, a national issue. But to the largest possible extent, the organization, uh, WFCO, will try to promote that the uh, assessment bodies, which are members, they speak to each other and speak to the client in order to promote a quicker access to the market in each of the countries. That's sort of the, the basic idea of the organization. Um, and what we really want to avoid is that the same assessment or maybe even the same test uh, is required uh, on the manufacturer when he comes to a new market. If a product has been assessed by us in Denmark, Denmark or by you in Spain, and the manufacturer wishes to sell the product in Brazil or in Canada or in South Africa, then he is not, he may be met by the same requirement, but the documentation that has been prepared here in Spain is accepted by the approval body in, in, uh, in South Africa or in Canada because of the relation and the network which has been established in the organization. So that's the, the, the key factor. Um, this is our website. Uh, it has recently been, uh, been updated. Um, and one of the things that is of most important importance in this organization is actually the networking part. Because in order to do what we do, we need to be very sure that the people that are uh, from the approval bodies around the world that we know who they are, we know their competence and we can, we can trust in the work that they do. So mutual recognition in the framework of this organization is heavily built on the, um, the networking part, the fact that we know each other, the fact that we trust each other and that we have a reliability in the work that we do so that I know when I receive documentation prepared by you in Spain, I know that it's been done by competent people and they have uh, investigated the necessary things so that I can immediately take over this, uh, this documentation. This is, uh, this is uh, what is really important uh, uh, in this organization. And when starting a global organization, there, is a, there was a, in the beginning a huge need for uh, getting to know each other, just the, 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 um, the way of working in each of the countries is very, very uh, different uh, looking at it uh, in the beginning. Uh, and we needed to familiarize ourselves with the different legal frameworks that the organizations are, are working in. 
So that took a, a lot of uh, a lot of time to uh, to to uh, familiarize ourselves with this. Um, in setting up sort of the framework for our agreement, uh, so that we had a we had a, a basis for the for the cooperation, um, and then the next step, once we had all these things put in place, we started expanding uh, the membership uh, organization. It started out by five members, uh, and it has now has uh, twenty five members uh, uh, globally, and with Korea being the latest uh, addition. Um, we have um, we have uh, members or we have organizations that we speak to which are not members yet in Chile and in, uh, in Singapore um, and we are pursuing uh, also um, um, uh, cooperation with uh, organizations in India and, and other parts of, uh, of South America and Africa um, because those are the countries which are indeed in, in uh, in interesting for manufacturers globally. Um, so far we can show uh, with quite a bit of pride that uh, we have a number of, of, uh, of examples of bilateral and multilateral <coughs> arrangements uh, that has been as a result been made as a result of the of the organization. Obviously there is the, of the, the cooperation in the between the European members which has started and has been organized for a number of years in UEATC. Um, but uh, certainly the, the cooperation between Canada and Japan, US and France, US and Germany, uh, for very specific areas, has been a result of the cooperation within WFTAO. So these are the success stories that we can show that the, the, the work, the organization and the work uh, uh, does is actually successful and the manufacturers benefit from this. Um, so in, 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 the, in, in the light of the recognition that we would not be able to make a, a, a world approval, we established a scheme for bilateral and multilateral uh, agreements and it starts out by talking to the manufacturer about which territories, which countries would be of interest for him to place his uh, product in. And already at that stage, you start cooperating with uh, the other assessment bodies to figure out what are their requirements. So you find a common way uh, of assessing the product already at that stage. And if you do it at that stage already, before you started testing and before you start uh, making the program, <coughs> and once the assessment is done, then you know that you have these countries um, uh, handled, so to speak, already at that stage. And the factor in doing it in that way is that it reduces considerably the time to market for the manufacturers. So when it comes to a new country, the, the time to market for the product becomes considerably shorter. and. Um, just by the fact that he knows that when he comes to this new marketplace, he will not be met with a lot of additional tests that he has to be uh, uh, that has to be uh, uh, be done, or assessment that has to be done. He knows from the beginning that everything is sorted. Then maybe the initial process is a little bit longer, but he will not have any surprises. And surprises is not a good thing for manufacturers when they try to plan the marketing of a new product. So that's what we try to prevent with this organization as well. Um, as I said before, we operate in, in a very, very different environment in, in the individual countries. In some places, the, the, uh, the approval, the appraisal, the assessment is mandatory. In other places, it is, it is a voluntary tool. For example, in New Zealand, it is almost uh, voluntary, uh, mandatory to have an assessment of, a, of an innovative construction product. And uh, um, in other countries, it's, an, it's a voluntary thing. So it means that we have uh, different uh, playing fields that we operate in, and it is certainly a different environment for the manufacturers to operate in as well. And if we, by the use of the organization, can make the manufacturer aware of these things before they try to penetrate the market, then it has a huge benefit also uh, for the manufacturer's access to the market. Um, and this is just to describe that the um, the, uh, the the approach um, is is different. 
um, when it comes to the mandatory field and the uh, voluntary field. For the mandatory field, it, the, 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 the primary uh, reason for these, for the documents, for the assessment is to comply with national regulation for the product. Whereas in the voluntary field, you want to increase the credibility of the information <coughs> that you give to the manufacturer, that you give to the market as a manufacturer. So the voluntary aspects are normally related to the credibility of the information that you give about the product um, and, um, and to promote uh, um, the probability of the market uh, taking your product into, uh, into account. Uh, this is the same. So uh, the organization is now established, it's about 20 years old in a couple of years time. Um, we have uh, some success stories that we can promote, but we are also, we also have to realize that, um, that uh, to a very large extent, um, we are not, we are most of the people involved in the organization, we are technical people. So we, uh, we live and breathe for the technical assessments. We uh, are passionate about what we do. We know what we do, but we are very, very bad at promoting ourselves, actually. Uh, we are not very good at, at, at describing our success stories. Um, and this is also the case for WFTO. The organization is actually a success. It has members throughout the, uh, throughout the world, and it has shown quite a few uh, bilateral uh, arrangements, but we are not very good at promoting what we do and and uh, um, and uh, sharing the uh, the positive experiences. So, they we just had a our, one of our general uh, annual assemblies uh, last uh, two months ago in in Brazil, and one of the key issues is uh, promoting not only the organization as such and the success stories that we have but also promoting the concept of technical assessment. In all of the areas where this is a voluntary thing, it, it becomes very important to, especially when you have, in many countries, uh, uh, an econ economical crisis situation, it becomes very important to emphasize the value of the technical assessment. So everybody is struggling for the attention of the manufacturers. So that's one of the key issues that we are also faced with, is trying to promote the concept. Why, do you, why is this assessment important to you? Why should you pursue the technical assessment? So this is, this is uh, what we want to do. And a very big part of this is trying to describe our value proposition. And this is something that we will be working on uh, over the next year for the next General Assembly, is to describe the value proposition and be much more aggressive in the marketing of the organization as such. So, as I said, uh, Korea has just become a new member and we just had uh, the annual meeting uh, with IPT in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, uh, a couple of months ago. Um, IPT was one of the founding members as well uh, and had for a long period of time uh, a very sort of um, anonymous existence uh, but in the growing economy, uh, Brazil is, um, is, 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 uh, is, um, is one of the growing emerging economies in, in the world. And, and you can certainly tell with IPT in Brazil that they are, they are growing fast. They get funding from the, uh, from the government. And they have uh, re sort of say, so to say, uh, established their, their membership. They've never stopped being a member of the organization, but they have become more active now. Um, and one of the things they wanted to do was to host the, uh, the, the, the meeting this year to tell everybody else what they were doing and um, to show that they have actually uh, made quite a significant investment in their, in their uh, institute when it comes to test equipment and uh, they are very, uh, they have invested highly in, in solar panel testing uh, equipment which is quite interesting. So we were, it was a very good, uh, good meeting, and uh, it gave us a lot of confidence in, in this organization. So we were happy to be there. Thank you very much. I think that's more or less my time. And then so. so thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thomas. Excellent presentation.
So we have time for only one question. <laughs>